You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. It's time for the Dragon Con Report, a podcast dedicated to help newcomers and veterans prepare for the upcoming annual convention in downtown Atlanta. With interviews, advice, and news from the pros and fans alike, be careful, you never know, you might actually learn something. Howdy and welcome to the third episode of the 2019 Dragon Con Con Report. There's a little more than 150 days until Dragon Con. That sounds like a lot, but it's really not. <laughs> um, and uh, I do apologize. And closer and closer. Uh, my voice is is starting to go out already. Um, so hopefully, I, you know, I can get it back before Dragon Con. But uh, I'm your host, Mike Gordon. I'm pleased to introduce you to the rest of our station crew for this episode. Of course, we have Director Mike Faber here. Mr. Gordon, you know you don't, you're supposed to get con crud at the con, not before the con. Well, ironically enough, I was at a con. So I was at a con, and then two weeks later, I was at another con. So I got double con crud. Um, not, not, I don't recommend that for anybody. So you got to have a nice you know, dose of apple pie to kill all the germs. That's that I, I do. That I do. I will take two. Make it a double. <laughs> Darren Noel is with us. Howdy, everybody. What's up? Howdy, sir. How are you feeling? I am just ducky. <laughs> okay. I'm good to go. All right. Spring is here. Spring has sprung, and all of the uh, the yellow pollen going up everyone's nose. It's very, it's very disgusting right now in Atlanta. <laughs> I, I, I can't think it's a coincidence that that's happening, and uh, I'm feeling a little under the weather. So. Probably not. Probably so, yeah, not. It's, it's that time of year. It's a little particly outside. I'm afraid we don't have Mary Lou with us this month, uh, but we do wish her the best of birthdays. Yay! Happy birthday. Not, not and, that she uh, listens or anything, but... <laughs> <laughs> she joining us listens to the episodes that she's on. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, joining us uh, for the... I think it's their first time, uh, but a friend of the station, Bethany Kissler, is here. Hello, everyone. Yes, it is my first time on the Con Report, but not my first time with you lovely ESO people. I'm I'm pleased to have you with us. And did I butcher your last name? I do forgive. Do forgive me if that's uh, true. It, it's perfectly all right. First shot of Kessler? the night, folks. First shot yeah. of the night. Yeah, I know. It won't, right? be, it won't be the last name. But <laughs> right. Exactly. Name. Yes. Bethany's not uh, familiar with our tradition, of course. Uh, butcher your name. Take a drink. Um, so yeah, some of us are, are quite uh, quite illiterate by the time this show ends. <laughs> Um, we also have a cosplayer, costume designer extraordinaire, uh, Mako Moosley is with us uh, later on the show. So you don't want to miss that. That's going to be a great uh, chat we have with him. And uh, we are a proud member of the ESO Network. Be sure to check out the Amazon link at the top of our website, esonetwork.com. It doesn't cost you any more to purchase your stuff, and it really does help us out a lot. We also have a T Public store filled with all kinds of cool designs, and there's a link for that on the ESO Network page as well, as well as a link to our Patreon page. Mike, what do we got going on at Patreon on the Patreon site? Well, as some of you have found out over the last month and so, we have been releasing early to our patrons, and thank you, lovely people who have been supporting the ESO Network. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have been releasing Earth Station One, Earth Station Who, and the Dragon Con report early by 48 hours to our patrons. So you get a preview of what's coming and you get to hear it before the rest of the world does. So that's the big news with it. We've also started a new podcast exclusively to the patrons and it's called the eso network riffs we've had the first two episodes out already and episode one was the batman movie from 1989 and this last month we did star trek to the wrath of khan so khan! exactly pride yeah so it was it was a lot of fun I should point out, if anybody is new to the Dragon Con Con Report, that's where the con comes from. 
of course. And, you know, it just fit perfectly. So, and then we, of course, have, you know, specific episodes released exclusively for our patrons. And we have different levels. You could support us for a dollar a month. Uh, you could support us for $5 a month or $10. And each level gets uh, special bonuses. So, you know, definitely check us out. Absolutely. We also release uh, a lot of the programming that we record at Dragon Con. We release to the patrons as well. So um, as a matter of fact, I think we still have some from last year that we're going to release at some point. Oh, yeah. Uh, we still have the Council of Mikes still to release. Oh, yes, of course. That seems like it's almost every other week now. But, exactly. Um, <laughs> it does. It's hard um, to get away from that name. <laughs> so is if you would like to leave feedback or comment on the show, please call our feedback line at 404-963-9057 and or email us at dragonconreport at esonetwork.com. As a matter of fact, we do have a piece of email that we're going to read to you later on in the show. But first, right now, we're going to get started with some news. We need a sound effect. There we go. Um, for those people who may not know, because I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but DragonCon now has an email newsletter that they're sending out. Uh, is anybody subscribed to this besides me? Wow. Okay, so I'm the only one. <laughs> Crickets. Well, they, they, I believe they're sending this out, like, I think bi-monthly. Um, so it is just a really cool kind of uh, HTML-coded uh, email that they're sending out to just let people know what the latest news is as far as uh, being a volunteer um, and some of the events that they've got going on as well as some of the latest guest announcements. So basically, it renders this podcast completely useless. No, I'm um, just kidding. Um, it doesn't have our it doesn't have our our flair. It doesn't it doesn't come with apple pie? And it doesn't come with that special touch. Exactly. We we don't talk about the special put, touch so long. yeah consent is king <laughs> exactly this, this is the me too movement now come on come on exactly but it's really easy to sign up all you have to do is go to dragoncon.org and follow the instructions and then you too can get the newsletter i think they've only issued out one so far this year uh that was uh in the end of february so i expect the next one to come actually pretty soon so um but yeah it's a pretty cool thing to get um, also mentioned on that newsletter, and I wanted to mention it too, here is the Dragon Awards. Nominations are now open for the 2019 Dragon Awards. So it's the fourth annual Fan Chosen Awards. So they, um, the, if, you see, if you have something that you want to nominate that you think is worthy of a Dragon Con report, uh, award, um, a science fiction novel, fantasy novel, a uh, alternate history novel, uh, comics, graphic novels, fantasy movies, science fiction movie, TV series, board game. If you've got something that you feel that is worthy of a Dragon Award, mention it, nominate it, and uh, and see what happens. How about the Dragon Con report? That would be a kind of cool thing to do. <laughs> what would we be? Would we be fantasy? Oh, it's a true fantasy, my friend. <laughs> would we be the real life? <laughs> Uh, of course, you know, that's comic book, Tiki Zombie, just saying, like, it would be, you know, it, it, it fits in the box. So, uh, I, I wouldn't say no. So in any case, um, but yes, go to nominate. You can find that link actually at application.dragoncon.org as well. Um, and then we've got, they recently had a meeting, uh, volunteers and directors met, uh, over the past couple weeks to talk about some changes, not a lot changing. They are using the same buildings. So no building change this year. Everything's going to be in the same building it was last year. Um, there are some changes to some of the tracks, though, as far as the names of the tracks. Uh, the Kaleidoscope track will now be referred to or now called the Kids Track. They want to make it perfectly clear that that's what this track is for, kids. Uh, the Alternate History Track, uh, Q's Track, is now called the Alternate and Historical Fiction Track. The podcasting track is now the digital media track. So those tracks are changing names. Uh, I think also the, the kids track has actually changed directors too, but I had, don't have confirmation on that. But uh, yeah, so, so uh, for those people who are fans of those tracks, just know that they're going to be called something different. They're going to look at it a little differently in the program, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, also, 
security at Dragon Con is now going to be a change to the word safety. Wherever you see the word security, it's going to be changed to safety. They're really emphasizing that Dragon Con is going to, their number one concern is safety. So uh, that is going to be a change that you're going to see uh, sweeping across all the convention as well. Um, any comments on any of those? Um, no. Okay. Just want to make sure. <laughs> No, I think they're all good, good things. Cause you know, like with the, with the podcasting track, they, you know, it also is digital media. It's video now. It's, you know, it's YouTube channels. It's, you know, it's just not people sitting in front of microphones like we do and talking and such. It's pretty much all out there. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I think in this time when you have a lot of folks that are are sort of YouTube uh, celebrities, uh, you'll find that they're probably going to be popping up in that track as well. Yay. <laughs> it'll definitely be, it'll definitely be an interesting year with some of the changes going around. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure. Like, okay. So the only other thing that they really talked about was that of course, volunteers are needed across the board. Volunteer Dan Carroll needs volunteers to work in media relations. Uh, they needs, he needs volunteers with uh, the ability. It says, Dan Carroll needs three to four volunteers with charisma and the ability to work in the MS office who understand and love Dragon Con for media relations. Do do they show up with their D&D character sheets? (laughs) That's a resume, dude. Come on. Uh, (laughs) How much charisma does that... uh, Uh, If you're playing a paladin. Do you roll and get charisma points? Is that how that works? Depends on how the roll falls, sir. Um, I was going to say, that's not really... It's not really a D&D character sheet, though. You know, you really want, you know, like... uh, Schools in suburbia, you know, it, it, <laughs> you want that kind of charisma. Schools you want, you want suburbia. PTO leader charisma. Humans and housewives, please. Humans and housewives, yes. You want, you want uh, <laughs> that that kind of PTO leader uh, finger mom. <laughs> that sounds well, like a category. Well, to avoid the argument with your wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, so yeah, they need volunteers across the board. Every track needs uh, volunteers. So if you are looking to participate in some way, the Dragon Con, the opportunities are there. So reach out to them. There's a, on their website, there's a place where you can apply. You have to apply to be a volunteer. So mm-hmm. uh, fill out the application, send it their way, and they will be in touch with you. Okay, so now the last thing is just to go over some important dates before we get to uh, the guest announcements, which I understand there's a lot of. Uh, so as far as, um, important dates coming up, uh, the media access application is now open. So anybody who desires media application can do so fill out that application. Um, performer apps applications are closing March 31st. So at the end, actually it's this weekend. So if you want to perform on the stage or in one of the areas at DragonCon, you better do so, uh, as soon as you listen to this, uh, if you can, if there's still time. Uh, and then the next uh, actually date is in May. The final day of the $115 membership rate is in May. So as we say before, if you if you if you know you're going, get those get those memberships. And then at the end of May is the guest application, uh, last day for guest application close. So so uh, if you are interested in being a guest, get that application in as well. So basically, fill out your applications, people. Uh, that needs to be done. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, now it's time for me to rest my voice for a little while and let Mike and Darren tell us about all the fun people that are coming to Dragon Con this year. Okay, Darren is going to be sitting in for Mary tonight. I am. I'm wearing my Yeoman Rand Red skirt. I'm good to go. Excellent. Damn, I wish this was a video podcast. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, no. Hair up. No, I saw your video you did over at the con over the weekend. It's good that we're audio, my friend. It's true. It's true. <laughs> we're good. So let us get started. Bottom of the list, alcohol ready. Every time we make a mistake, <laughs> take a shot. So we apologize in advance. And Darren, take it away. Steven Novella is the host and producer of The Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, a popular and award-winning weekly science podcast. Kurt Poteen spent over 20 years in the video game industry and now is a voiceover artist, podcaster, Twitch streamer, and a member of the Giant Seas Team Up Network. Mike McCone 
Uh, his first published work was for DC Comics Justice League of America and Marvel Comics Punisher series. In the years since, he has illustrated almost every major character for the two, the big two publishers, including lengthy runs on Teen Titans, Amazing Spider-Man, and Fantastic Four. Tom Bancroft has 30 years experience in the animation industry, which of which was for Walt Disney feature animation, where it was an animator on short feature films of which the beauty and the beast, the lion King, Aladdin, Pocahontas, Mulan, and brother bear were part of his list. Dominique Provost Chalky began dancing and acting at the age of four after she quickly discovered her passion for all performing arts. Her favorite project to date is filming Winona Earp, where she plays Winona's younger sister, Waverly. Other credits include 12 Monkeys, Murdoch Mysteries, and Avengers Age of Ultron. Michael Auckland is known for his disappearing to every role and radically transforming his look for every new character. Television appearances include guest starring as a recurring role on Altered Carbon, Winona Earp, Gotham, Bates Motel Season 2, Continuum, Almost Human, Alcatraz, Fringe, Intelligence, and Battlestar Galactica. Catherine Barrel has appeared in numerous television shows in both Canada and the USA. She has a strong love for comedy performance and studied improv at the famous Groundlings Comedy School in California. She is most known for her role as Officer Nicole Haught in the sci-fi network's Winona Earp. I'm, I'm thinking it's a Winona Earp heavy year. I know a certain Kevin that's going to be very happy about that. Emily Andrus has a diverse list of television credits to her name. Currently, she is the showrunner and executive producer of Sci-Fi's new hit series, Wyona Earp. Previously, she spent three seasons as a showrunner and effects producer of Lost Girl. Recently worked as the supervisor producer on Killjoys. Tamara Duarte is perhaps best known for her heated love story with Fiona on the hit television series Degrassi, The Next Generation on Nickelodeon. She has just been announced as a recurring guest star on Winona Earp as Rosita Bostillos and is currently shooting the fourth season of Hard Rock Med. Wow, I definitely see a still on? theme here. I don't know why. Mm. <laughs> oh, cool. Eisner Award winning Jay Lee is a Korean-American comic book artist known for his dark style. In 1990, he became one of the youngest artists ever to work for a major publisher. His art can be seen in Stephen King's Dark Tower, before Watchmen, Osmondius, Marvel's The Inhumans, and Batman Superman. All right, kids. Stalker alert on. Zachary Levi, one of the most respected actors of his generation, has become known for his captivating on-screen presence. He is known for his roles in the fan favorites Chuck, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Tangled, Thor of the Dark World, and as the titular character in the highly anticipated movie Shazam! Shannon Henning is a visual artist, science communicator, and art director for March Mammal Madness. She writes and illustrates the welcoming camp haven and is an art performer, sword swallower, and fire eater. Fun at parties. <laughs> you know it. As a series lead character designer, Sean Galloway provides the defining look that serves as a jumping off point for the stories of the new half hour Sony Pictures TV animated series, The Spectacular Spider Man. Eric Burnham is a comic writer artist that first broke into the comics by the way of Nick Landmeyer featuring f from Shooting Star Comics. He is currently works for IDW's Ghostbuster series and has worked on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Back to the Future, Galaxy Quest, Scarlet Spider, New Warriors, mm -hmm. and Kiss. Aretta Baumgartner has been a professional puppeteer since 1992 and is proud to be the education director of the world-renowned Center for Puppetry Arts in Atlanta, Georgia. You can currently hear Amanda Miller as Sailor Jupiter in Viz Dub's version of Sailor Moon and Sailor Moon Crystal as Borat Uzmanski in Baruto, Naruto the movie and TV series. Drink up, folks. <laughs> Erin Zeck is an actress best known for her roles as Blake Belladonna from RWBY and Dr. Emily Gray in the web-based series Red vs. Blue. Heather Walker has been in the film industry for eight years. She's able to use her skills as an actress, writer, director, producer, and combine that with her love of geek culture. Larissa Thompson, along with her business partner, Mark Gerst, founded the entertainment company, The Templin Institute, which covers critical and often overlooked elements of sci-fi, fantasy, and alternate history. Lindsay Jones is an actor-voice actor based in Austin, Texas, and is best known for her voice roles in various Rooster 
Teeth Productions, including Ruby in RWBY, Kimball in Red vs. Blue, Space Kid in Camp Camp, and much, much more. Kara Eberly is an American voice actress and internet personality. She's most known for her role as Y. Schnee in the award-winning anime series RWBY. I see another theme here. I don't know why. <laughs> Barbara Dunkelman is an actor, voice actor, who is known for her voice roles in various Rooster Teeth productions, including Yang in RWBY, Jensen in Red vs. Blue, Neris in Camp Camp, and Orf in X-Ray and Ve. Ellie Lockhart is a book and newspaper editor, radio personality, voice actor, screenwriter, musician, and host of the popular Robot Battle competition at Dragon Con. Alvin Johnson is founder of the 501st Legion, a Star Wars costuming organization with over 20,000 members. Gene Ha is a four-time Eisner Award winner and is a comic book artist best known for his collaboration with writer Alan Moore on Top Ten and its prequel, The 49ers. He is currently working on a, his book, May, about a girl who follows her missing sister to a world of science and mystery. Featured on Nova's Secret Life of Scientists for her dual life as a psychopharmacologist and stuntwoman, Jessica Colley also serves as a scientific consultant for Hollywood sci-fi. Gary Reinhardt has written nonfiction, fiction, and two albums of music, some songs of which were played on the Dr. Demento show. Cheryl Lynn. Go look that up, kids. (laughs) Oh, Dr. Demento is so awesome. We should get him at Dragon Con sometime. Mm. Oh, yeah. He he does it online now, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah go, go, go Google that stuff, kids. Get yeah. an education. <laughs> Cheryl Lynn Lambert is a professional costume prop puppet builder whose works include feature films like The Muppet Christmas Carol, The Hunger Games, TV shows like Dinosaurs or Homeland, and live properties such as Avenue Q and Star Trek The Experience. Greg Hauser is known for his vocal work with companies like PetSmart, DuPont, American Express, and many others. Ian Harris is one of the most brilliant and skeptical minds in comedy with two one-hour TV specials and considered one of the best improvologists in the business. Ellie Collins is a writer, director, and voice actor based in the Atlanta area who has worked in podcasting and audio dramas for nearly 10 years. Eisner Award-winning artist, graphic novelist, and screenwriter Bob Burden is the creator of the world's first surrealist superhero, The Flaming Carrot, and Atlanta's first comic book superhero. Also known for major motion pictures, Mystery Men, and his award-winning work on Gumby. Asher Angel began his career as a child actor in the 2008 film Jolene, starring Jessica Chastain. He's known for his role as Jonah Beck in the 2017 Disney Channel series Andy Mack, and as Billy Batson alongside Zachary Levi in DC Comics' Shazam! And that's the list, folks. How's that? We did it. It wasn't terrible. No. No. For us, we did really good. Uh Yeah. You only get slightly buzzed so far. But the show's early. It's okay. I thought I was going to get a chance to rest my voice a little bit more. But Sorry. Uh, that's all right. I appreciate it. I appreciate the effort. Way to go, gents. I remember, kids, every day you should say Shazam, <laughs> just in case. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, cool. All right. So now that we know we've got the news and notes out of the way, as well as the announcements, um, main topic Woo! time. Woohoo! Uh, this one is um, interesting because... Um, <laughs> uh, this one came up to me because I think, Darren, right? You were suggesting that uh, possibly Dragon Con got some competition this year uh, as far as um, I believe that there's – is it – now, is it set in stone that Disney uh, – Well, it's, it is set in stone as far as we know that uh, Disney World is opening Galaxy's Edge at Walt Disney World Labor Day weekend in right. Orlando, Florida. That's a pretty big deal. That's a big deal. <laughs> Absolutely, it's a big deal. Um, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> if I'm going to wait in a line, I'd rather do it inside a hotel where there's air conditioning. <laughs> Fair well, enough. There's that. Yeah. Well, the running joke is, you know, Darren and I were joking about it, saying, as a cosplay, we should just walk around saying, line starts here for <laughs> Star Wars land. Mm-hmm. I have my well, Disney store badge. I could I could totally be a Disney employee in a heartbeat. <laughs> so, 
So, so wait a minute. Does that mean you guys are not being going to be at Dragon Con this year? No, we'll be at Dragon Con. Stop it. <laughs> just checking. Just checking. I, I figured <laughs> I, I'm, hey, I just need a heads up so I can get a new crew. Yeah, I, 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 we know. I we was going to say, I have um, a legacy right. hotel, so I will absolutely be at Dragon Con. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Got Indeed. Hotel. Yep, yep, yep. Well, it just led me thinking, and I was talking to some cosplayers over the weekend at the convention that I was at, and uh, I'm uh, going to make sure they remain anonymous, but uh, um, both of them are pretty decent-sized. Uh, they have followings, as far as cosplayers go. Um, I think one of them is even at the quote-unquote professional cosplay level. Um, and uh, both of them don't do Dragon Con. And they were saying that their reasons behind it were a little different. One is uh, uh, closely tied with the Toronto yeah. Uh, yeah. Expo, the fan expo that happens that weekend. Same which weekend. Is, that which, is, which is in and of itself, uh, I would say. A comp- um, non-competitor. Yeah. Yeah, non-competitor, sure. Um, and it's bigger. I think they get more people than Dragon Con. I think they get over 100,000 people there. Well, also look at it though. For the last five years, they've been going head to head with Dragon Con, and you know you've been seeing a lot of the celebrities who've been coming only coming to Dragon Con for two of the four days because yeah. they're splitting their time with Toronto. Absolutely, I mean Double that's dipping. that's the smart yep. play. Um, and yeah, it's a uh, it, it's interesting because it's not just. Like around that weekend, I mean, you've got absolutely, you've got the Toronto one, um, but there's also some up and coming cons that that might give Dragon Con a run for their money. So it, it's it's kind of interesting when you look at the whole con scene. I I agree, and the the the, the, the other cosplayer that I talked to sort of uh, echoed that. She said that she doesn't go to Dragon Con anymore. She did. But she doesn't anymore because, A, it's gotten too big for her. Uh Um, She really doesn't like crowds. Um, And, uh, unfortunately, the more people that there are, the more people can take advantage. Let's put put it that way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've talked uh, about that on the show plenty of times. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. <laughs> so I, you know, obviously her 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 thoughts are not unfounded, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and also she just doesn't drink, and she doesn't really like that party yeah, that party drink. atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. So so for her, um, that's that's a turnoff for her. So she would like to. She does other shows. Um, there's a, and there's now there's, there's so many conventions. I mean, like I said, I was just at two this past month. Um, there's a lot of fan conventions that are very fan oriented, much like Dragon Con, but on a much, 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 much smaller scale. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot of like trade show, uh, you know, it's kind of like the fan expo, um, the, the trade show type ones that are all Uh, celebrity. Oh, the merch cons. But Sure. Yeah. But uh, the fact that, you know, if people are going to, you know, especially if people are traveling, if they're going to spend their hard earned money and they can only afford this day and age to go to one show a year, one vacation a year, it mm-hmm. makes it very difficult. And all of a sudden, you know, Dragon Con is maybe, maybe they skip it this year. You know, um, we definitely saw last year where attendance kind of t- tapered off. Uh, for the first time. Well, yeah, it didn't increase like it had right. been in previous years. Yeah, it definitely didn't because they were expecting probably at least five to 10,000 more than they actually got this last year. Do you guys actually think maybe oh, well, it could be set oversaturation? Though I will tell you from having done this con for many, many years and then ha- being there on the ground, I, I kind of felt like we had. We had Friday numbers on Thursday, and then we had Saturday numbers kind of for three days, and then we had Monday. <laughs> so some of the crowds, it, it felt yeah. like there were a lot more people than there normally are. Even if the fire marshal numbers don't bear that out, but everybody knows that those are fire yeah, marshal yeah. numbers. So, um, so yeah, as, as Dragon Con become as a, as a great man who's no longer with us would call <laughs> us the distinguished competition. Um, uh, I always love that term of phrase. Um, and, uh, but you know, I mean, Dragon Con is unique. I, I recently saw on one of the Dragon Con boards, uh, uh someone asked, they said, I re- they, they said, I really love going to Dragon Con every year. Are there any other conventions that 
you can experience something similar. Like, I'd like to know, like, if there's any other place that you can go, any other conventions that are kind of like Dragon Con. And down the line, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> like, there's just like, I mean, most of, I mean, there are other conventions. It depends on what you're into, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people mentioned in Atlanta, uh, Momocon, which, you know, is, is a different vibe. I've, I've been to that show several times. It's a very different vibe than Dragon Con. It's not to say that it's a bad vibe. Yeah. It's just a different it, one. No, just different. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is. But then you also have stuff like NY Comic Con or, you know, New England Comic Con or San it, Diego it or too big C2E2. and too terrifying. Like as 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 the tiny introvert hey. that literally spends all of August gearing up for Dragon Con, San Diego Comic Comic Con is kind of like a nightmare because there's just too many people. And yeah, well, and San Diego is also you know they yeah, limit the exactly. match numbers. So, um, and so does New I, York. It, and they're all in the big convention centers, right? And yeah. Dragon Con's life like that. Dragon Con is spread across five hotels and the yeah, um, and America's Mart for the show. And uh, eventually, it, though, they're going to have to, it, it, to to cap things just for the sake of being able to actually move in the hotels. Uh, but the thing is, though, with Dragon Con, what really super makes it special is that you don't get... All the, at, at smaller cons, you don't get the same like fan track level because Dragon is essentially like sixteen mm. different small niche cons in a trench coat <laughs> and walking right. around going, "Hey, so I mean, this panel." In mm. that sense, I mean, in that <laughs> sense, no, you're not going to find the same um, the same experience as you would at a smaller convention. But then again, at a smaller convention, you don't also have to die for um for elevators um like you'll die if you don't get this one um because dragon con was actually i think my first big convention that wasn't a work convention and the smaller con i went to after dragon con um someone was like oh my god we don't have to die for the elevator and i'm like when when you when you come with me to Dragon Con, you will understand that this is just ingrained at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mean you don't, you have, don't to have to go down like, to go up? You don't yourself no. into the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, all those other cons are at actual well, convention centers, all. right? And they have hours usually set by, like, well, the convention Well, not all of them. Staff. I mean, some of them are... Some of them well, are in all, hotels. But... Um, some of them are in convention centers, uh, but they get the run of the place. Um, just you know, as long as they don't trash the place, mm-hmm. it kind of. It kind of depends well, yeah. on where you are. Um, there was mm-hmm. well, like Heroes Con is usually a nine a.m. to six p.m., nine a.m. to seven p.m., nine a.m. to yeah. five p.m. weekend well, affair, and, and that's it. You know, and, and there are the professionals are in the hotels hanging out, but there's no like video room. There's no parties in the hotel rooms until well, two AM, that's for sure. It's a much more relaxed well, and con like, atmosphere. Um Hypercon, which is one of the local Nashville cons, um, and it's an amazing small con because they they are they're really good about what they do. Um but yeah, they, they make sure that they have their video room that is up twenty four seven and then they have the panels after dark. So there's something, and then they have, like, designated, like, different room parties you can go to if you still want to burn that midnight oil. So that's, and it's mm-hmm. it's in a hotel, so they, they kind of just arrange a lot of this with the hotel staff before, before going into it. But, yeah, I mean, I mean it, it kind of mm-hmm. depends on what you go for. Like, I personally, I, I don't totally. drink. But then again, I'm... A person who has severe allergies so the easiest way to get me high is to take me to an oxygen bar um so yeah but the thing is you know truthfully you don't need no, to you, drink I, at dragon no. to have i've been i've been to dragon sober before i know that's a yeah. stunning hey, statement I'm, but it's true I, Oh, exactly. I, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, 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 wait. I, I know. Think all, I think we all really need to just take a moment and, and ponder <laughs> what Darren just told Darren, us. I, I had some antibiotics I was taking, 
And you can't have alcohol with antibiotics. Uh, okay. That's gotcha. a bad thing. So for that con, it was a bummer that I got to go <laughs> hey, to the con. Hey, Darren, though, I can do you one better. <laughs> I once had to do Dragon Con uncaffeinated. Sure. Oh, and since I've thing. been working wow. the convention since 2010. No, um, I couldn't do it. I'd be like, yeah, I'll be yeah. Home. That was also that. That was the year of the 19 sure. panels. So, <laughs> no, no, no. See, I, I think at some point Dragon's going to have to expand and move some of their paneling into the World Congress Center for the space purposes, right? But in order to, to do that and make it work for everybody, they're going to have to supply really excellent yeah. shuttle bus service. And I don't know yeah, how that's and then, going to work. Uh, I mean, honestly, like they they could just take over main programming and move it so, somewhere there, so that anyone who wants to do main programming, mm-hmm. you're not forever clogging the hamster tubes. Um, which yes, and of course, everyone who's listening to this probably already knows this, but if you don't, this is your first time. When I say hamster tubes, I mean the habit trails that go from the Hilton to the Westin and uh, they're great they're fun but they're they get caught with people traffic really easily so well I know last year they actually closed off the habit trails that went between the two World Congress yes. Center buildings you mean the America's Mart at the America's Mart yes yeah yeah, they're yeah. going to have to expand out into to more of that area. Um, I mean, the dealer's room is not a dealer's room. It's four floors. It's it's a dealer's it's a mall dealer's because mall. it is, takes up four floors it is. Um, at this point in the American Mart. So. There's a pizzeria yeah. in it. It's a mall. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Where's the Radio Shack? <laughs> uh, no, it's down, it, it's it's <laughs> third floor in one of the corners. Uh, the guy has a booth. <laughs> it, it doesn't count as someone soldering together a costume. No, that is a not a radio shack. shack. That is cosplay <laughs> repair. <laughs> <sighs> That's what someone should have. They should have a booth at Dragon Con cosplay oh, repair. How oh, many dollars? People just walk around. Repair. I know you're volunteering your services. Make some money. Be an American. I mean, I, I I've done the oh, thing where I I'm took kidding, fans and bags of candy to the pre reg line and been like, "All right, five dollars, you can have a fan." You know, for two dollars, I'll give you five Reese's. Five whole Reese's. Five whole Reese's. Oh. Mm. All right, but so do- now I'm gonna I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Mike. Did you want to make All a point? Right. Go for it. Okay, sorry. Uh, um, I just wanted to switch it up a little bit because in addition to, you know, other conventions may be affecting Dragon Con. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, how is Dragon Con affecting other conventions? Uh, we've seen a, uh, like two of the Doctor Who conventions in uh, the Southeast, three actually, are, are either not going to happen this year or 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 not going to happen next year they're they're just having problems uh getting people enough people to survive uh-huh. um the the trek the local trek uh star trek convention here uh struggles to have people attend yeah um uh so some of the local fan shows uh i've also seen you know some of the other local shows having uh, some of the comic conventions struggling to to have a lot of people attend to theirs too. Uh, I mean, with, with, you know, in this, in this day and age when we've got this like sort of shrinking or at least stagnant economy, people can't do as much as they can uh, as they could maybe a few years ago. And we're finding that they have to make decisions Uh and, you know, either dragon con is, is going to be part of that decision or they're not. Well, I mean, yeah, that's the way it works. I and mean, Dragon Con's no, not a cheap not. weekend. No. I mean, you can you can go for a day and skip the hotel. That's about as cheap as you can go. It, isn't the one-day ticket like 80 or $90 at something the door or something like that? Uh, but, uh, I mean, around that, right? So then you add food for two meals. So now you're at 100 and I'm sure if you're going for one day, you're going to hit the dealer's room. 
as a priority. Yeah, no, that's, that's literally all you're going to do. Probably. I'm sorry. That's what you're going to do. So you go in there on a Saturday or Sunday and you blow however, whatever your budget is and you go home, right? And you don't touch a panel and you don't touch the video room and you don't touch a rave and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's, that's fine if that's what you have the money to do. Please do that. But you guys that. also have to realize Dragon Con has become like a big bully in the yeah. Southeast. Mm-hmm. You know, look at, you know, Mike, you can attest to this also. You know, we have to sign an agreement when we become guests that we're not guests at another con for a hundred days prior or, or, or before, before, right? Or, exactly. No, before or after. I'm sorry. No. Prior is before. Prior yeah. is before. <laughs> but before or after, we cannot, Mike or I can't be guests as Mike Faber and Mike Gordon. But, you know, and then you also can't be at a con for that type of thing also within a, you know, I think it's a hundred miles or so, yeah. you know, within it. So, but so that, you know, limits people because now there is an Atlanta comic con in July, in July yeah. right there. That's right at the world Congress center. And they, this is their second year already that they're coming and they've got some great guests, but seeing these people, you know, who is not going to be at dragon con mm-hmm. because and Momo cons in May, right? Wasn't that Memorial day weekend? Yeah, it's right on the fringe of it. It's, it's right on the 100 day yeah, fringe. And since like, they're associated with Dragon, I'm sure there's a an exit clause there. Kind of, sort of, yeah. Well, yeah, I think I, I think, think that, that, and that's a general clause that Dragon Con has in the contract. You're right. Well, I'm sure I, other I, cons have that too. Yeah, they do. And there's other there's exceptions. I mean, I've seen John Barrowman uh, mm-hmm. be at Dragon Con and then a month later be at Heroes and yeah. Villains. Uh, I, so, I think it also um, I think it also uh, depends on like certain certain the way certain things are worded um because I know right, um because right. I because I know that um I mean for me as an attending professional it's a little looser there you know I have a little bit more wiggle room but I also know some people get around this as they're an attending professional doing panels at one convention and then they're just solely vending at a different convention. So they're not technically crossing the streams. Uh, but <laughs> Right, right. Well, I mean, yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, we're a guest at Dragon Con, but we can be, um, we can participate and help with panels and cover it for media uh, for our podcast at other conventions. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and it's like, so... I will say this year, um, as an attending professional and all this stuff, uh, <laughs> the the fact that I have a legacy hotel is pretty much the one reason we decided we're like, no, Dragon Con will still do, but we're probably going to take a break from every other convention we do because honestly, convention burnout is also a thing. Yeah, it's true too. Oh yeah, and, I'm finding that and it's time. one of those where you know my roommate and I uh, because we're we're both writers. We both um, teach the writing, or teach writing workshops, um, do panels. We're quote unquote expert witnesses for the defense on a whole host of things. But we decided at the beginning of the year that honestly, we're tired. Um, and Dragon Con, and we'd skip Dragon Con if we didn't have a legacy hotel. Because honestly, that's worth my entire net worth as a human being, not to lose that legacy hotel. So. <laughs> Yeah, seriously. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> but, I don't blame you at all. I mean, I'm struggling. I still but, haven't got a hotel uh, for this year. The thing is, though, is is I always tell people um, whenever they say, oh, yeah, I'd love to go to Dragon Con one day. I'm like, okay, but if you're going to do that, pick the year you want to go and start planning for it the year before because it's it's that big. I mean, you, you actually – to to do this sort of convention and like not completely go bonkers, you kind of have to walk in with a plan, even if that plan is I'm going to wander in and out of panels the entire time. Um, so you can't just like willy nilly decide, oh, I'm going to do this because that that won't fly at Dragon Con. Oh, no, you you really have to treat it like yeah. it's a trip to Disney. Yeah. Actually, I do more for planning it. for Dragon Con than I ever did for my trip to Disney. <laughs> well, it's yes, really you know. hard to do when you see the schedule like the week before the con well, starts. <laughs> it's like, oh well, my god! It's like, and the last the the last seven or so years, something like that. 
Um, I don't know. They kind of all blend in after you've done four. Um, <laughs> you kind of just blend together. Um, but uh, I I just go by what's on my schedule. Um, like what am I physically there doing panels on? And then what's like the, the three things that I absolutely positively must do while I'm there. And generally that's finding a couple of friends that I'm not already on panels with and like high-fiving or having a meal with them or something and staying as far away from main programming as possible. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I I am an introvert with crowd anxiety, but I love Dragon Con. I love working Dragon Con, but I wasn't kidding when I said it takes the entire month of August to kind of like mentally psych myself up for all of this. It takes people a while to like get psyched up for Dragon and then it takes you a while to like Pretty oh, much. That's that's why I that's, so. that's, and and ev- everyone mm-hmm. um locally kind of laughs at it a little bit. Um because I always block off the, the month before Dragon, I block off because I'm either doing research for panels or I'm reading things or watching things or trying to to just cram for Dragon Con and then the month of September I I don't do anything. I go to work, I hide underneath my bed, I kind of just chill. And then we pick back up normal normal stuff in October. So Yeah, that sounds so, about right. So sorry, sorry, Bethany. I'm just gonna try to try to steer us a little bit back on track. We have a track. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> yes, the uh, the con report track. It's the new track <laughs> the, the new track room that's gonna be um, in a western room somewhere, hopefully. By the way, did I mention that I don't have a room yet for Dragon yeah, Con? Yeah, just, five times. I just want to see if we can make that clear. I'm taking I'm a really, shot every time you mention it. I'm, okay, so I'll mention it again. Oh, uh, sweet. <laughs> yeah, so if anybody can hit me up, Weston Preferred, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so so I think... I think what we're getting around is, is that there are other shows. There's lots of other shows. There's a lot of other events that, uh, uh, that people can go to. Um, and obviously times are tight, so they can only choose to do one thing Uh that more than anything. It's not as if that there's another convention that's like dragon con or dragon con that that's sort of eclipsing dragon con at this point. Right. It's more like, it's more just a factor of, well, you know, Disney's doing Star Star Wars, so I got to go there, man. Uh, you know, or Celebration is awesome this year, so I got to go. I got to go to Star Wars Celebration, or I got to mm-hmm. go to San Diego. Now, now, mind you, a lot of the shows that we've talked about, like New York, San Diego, Chicago, which just got done, um, C two E two, that is, yep. um, Denver, uh, Toronto, those are at least twice as big attendee wise as Dragon Con. Uh-huh. So if people are not comfortable with the crowds at Dragon Con, they're in for a big shock if they go to any of those. Especially <laughs> since those are all in yes, one exactly. convention center. They're not they're not they're not spread out. Yeah. <laughs> now the convention it's centers are, are as big Christmas as season. Place. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it feels mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Um uh, I mean, though, some of those convention centers, like the Javits, is as big as a city. I think it has its own like <laughs> yeah. two codes, maybe. Um, but it's uh, it, it's it's still, I mean, suffocating it's huge. Pack. And uh-huh. there were times when you couldn't go from one area to another uh, because of traffic, because of, there was so much crowds. Like they could, they just said, "Nope, nobody is allowed in the dealer room now." Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but I need to get to my table. Too bad. Well, um, I think I think this year, Mike, we're going to see less families at Dragon. Oh, you only think so? only because Disney now, you know, they have Fox. <laughs> they are releasing movies on such a schedule that there's almost one blockbuster every month, even during the slow months of the year for films to be released. Yeah, sometimes two or three. Which is why I, why Solo didn't do too well because it was just near too many other yeah. things that people prioritized, like, like, right? So going to the movies for one person is a twenty five dollar thirty dollar experience because you got to get your five dollar soda that's a gallon and a half that no one ever needs in two hours, and your your three pound bucket uh, of popcorn why- and your ticket. Now multiply that by a yeah, family exactly. of four or five. There's your entertainment budget for the month. Yeah, and right. 
I mean, I think uh, I think what a lot of people really love about Dragon Con is that it kind of you do kind of get like a more like almost intimate feeling like you like you can almost like, you know, just Mm -hmm. walk up and talk to somebody, uh, especially like in the Walk of Fame. Um, So I think that's where a lot of people kind of go, no, you're not really going to get that anywhere else because anywhere else. I mean, smaller cons, you may get to do that a little bit, but people do kind of rush you through, but, and they do that on the Walk of Fame some, but, uh, but it's that kind of, you know, small con feeling inside of a huge con apparatus Mm -hmm. that they, they really, um, that people really kind of, you know, really grok to because they, they like that. They like the fact that they can come to the sci-fi classics track and while they may have no idea what they're doing panels on, they they know the track directors and they know the people who are going to, you know, be on the panels and they come to see the madness happen. Um, so that that's kind of what draws a lot of people to to Dragon Con. The, but for that same reason, a lot of people won't come to Dragon Con or stopped coming because I mean, it could be because of a guest or because of, you know, somebody did something dumb and they just can't deal with that anymore. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's true. When I talk or your about budget's, yeah, just, or too your budget's just too tight. I mean, go to the parade that year, yeah. you know, I've done that. Oh, yeah. Before they <laughs> locked down the hotels and I was like massively trying to pay off my student loans, I would go to the oh, hotels yeah. and hang out in the lobby. And not and not have a badge because it was allowed back then. You can't do that now. I mean, but back then, you certainly yeah. could. So you go to hotel parties yeah, with exactly. friends. That was fine. And then Didn't there's, a badge for uh, that. Um, but yeah, I mean, and and as they're a bigger con, and as there is a bunch of drinking that goes on, I mean, they they kind of do need to step up their security some, at least in some areas, because I will tell you, at a smaller con, I don't have as the only female on this podcast. Uh, I don't worry about being groped or, you know, running into any of those risks at a smaller con. Um, but at Dragon Con, it almost always happens. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Without fail, someone will try something. And, and, and that's a, that's a problem with large cons because you you have the tyranny of size, right? So. Someone can like pinch someone's butt yeah, and then exactly. be gone in the crowd uh-huh. before you have a chance to react and turn around. I mean, that's, yeah, just, that's, that's unfortunately yeah. most of us, like ninety five, ninety seven percent of us, are very well behaved. Yeah. And of course, as the night goes long, alcohol enters into the picture, and we've talked about that tons of times about how you have to be, you know, responsible. Well, Consent is king. Yeah, exactly. And, don't be a and dish. then you know, you've also got the other thing of it would super help if the you know, if the city of Atlanta wouldn't host uh, college football games the same weekend, but. Oh, well, that's, that's not even an issue. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's it's like every year. That is a non-starter. The city's like, they give us money too. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) And you're like, well, yeah, I guess they do. So. Yeah. And, and more people fit into that stadium than the Dead Dragon. Than fit into (laughs) the Dragon Con hotels. Which is just mind blowing. Exactly. But yes, more people fit into that stadium. So, so yeah. Um, well, the other thing, yeah, that that was concerning because uh, the the one cosplayer that I mentioned that she says she wasn't going to do uh, Dragon Con anymore because of safety issues. Uh, she did actually tell me that uh, during one night, uh, I think uh, someone did spill beer all over her uh, mm-hmm. costume. So, and stuff like that. Just she was just tired of dealing with that. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was a turnoff for her. And and again, it depends on what people are interested in. I mean, obviously, bad things are going to happen. Um, and but yes, I'm glad to hear that safety is a number one concern for everybody at DragonCon this year. Um, so I'm be really curious to see what steps they're taking, further steps, additional steps they're taking to implement that. Yeah, absolutely. So agreed. Agreed. So, okay, well, cool. Well, it was an interesting discussion. I just, you know, I, I certainly, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what the numbers are like this year, what the attendance is like this year. Okay. If people are really, you know, flocking to Disney instead, uh, I would imagine good luck getting tickets, getting down there for Star Wars Galaxy or 
Star Wars tickets later. are available. Hotel rooms have already sold out. Yeah, I'm sure. Like for five years, you know, sure. on yeah. Disney property. Yeah, no, no not sure. not for five years. Just for that opening weekend, there's tons of availability. Wow, I, it's going to be insane. And it's they're not doing insane. fast passes, so you will be standing in yeah. the line. <laughs> Probably <laughs> until the next year of Dragon Con. Probably, I don't plan to go back till 2021 because of it. So, because the lines for Pandora in, in the Avatar Land was crazy. You know, that was like three years after opening. So, yeah, that was Avatar. Yeah, that was Avatar, yeah, this, this not Star probably, Wars. Yeah, I mentioned you know? that. Uh, I mentioned Labor Day weekend. I'm going to be walking up to people at the that outside the the Hyatt, and I'll be like, "What are you waiting for? What are your line for?" And they'll be like, "Oh, Star Wars Disney." Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> just with without even a hint of irony galaxy's no, no, edge. they're gonna be like no we're actually standing like the line is this long the line is this way for galaxy's edge it goes as long so well very cool interesting great discussion as always gang appreciate it um now bethany i just thought it would be cool to spend a little bit more time with you um talking about your experience with a dragon con when when was your first dragon con? i believe my first dragon con was 2010 yeah 2010 okay so that's uh that's pretty good you've been going there for like this will be your ninth year uh, uh, now you've been going in a row yeah, like, it's right in like a row consecutive? i haven't i haven't missed a year yet okay what uh, what drew you to going to dragon con what was the first initial like thing that said i want i want well, to go there well um my very best friend uh, was working it um, because she and I, well, I now, but she has been for a while, uh, work with uh, Michael Stackpole and the late Aaron Alston in their hourly writers workshops. So I got um, my membership given to me as a birthday gift um, and, <laughs> and then promptly was like, oh, I will get to see my very best friend who I haven't seen in like a year or so. And then also get to meet two of the people who, who, you know, kind of were foundational writers when I was a teenager. I'm like, yeah, sure. That's awesome. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I got drawn into it. Cause I really, really wanted to see my best friend and I knew where she would be. on weekend. Had you, had you been to any other conventions prior to this? No, this was my first real actual fan convention. Um, every other convention had been kind of like a work thing. Um, either my parents um, for like a missions conference because uh, they're retired Southern Baptist missionaries or it was a an actual day job conference. So. And when did you? When would you when did you start getting involved like with uh, tracks and panels? And- uh, approximately my second year going, um, Kellen. Well, it started with Mike Stackpole because uh, Mike and Aaron were like, "Hey, this is Allison's friend. We've heard about you for a long time, and you're competent, and we can like trust you with money, so we can teach you how to minion." Um, so, so they kind of gave me my first shot at actually like, at like being involved in that side. Uh, but Kellen Harkins with the Am Sci-Fi uh, track is the one who first put me on an actual panel, and probably because I was shooting my mouth off um, with another friend right outside one of the other panels, and she's like, "So I, uh, I think we can use you," and um, that was kind of history. Um, so every year, uh, it, it always comes down to the, uh, to Mike Stackpole gets me first cause he pays for me to be there. Kellen gets me second and then everybody else can do a fist, uh, you know, just throw bones or throw dice for who gets me next. Earlier in the show, you mentioned 19 panels. Is that like, was that the peak or how many panels do you on average you usually do? A year? On average, I do anywhere from... Con- counting work, counting the workshops that I teach, because I've graduated to not just Minion, but I also teach some of the hourly writing workshops. Um, yeah, it's somewhere between, you know, 12 to 19, generally speaking. And that's across, like, six or seven different tracks. Um, the high fantasy people uh, uh, found me last year, and uh, Jennifer Liang was like, I'm keeping you. And I'm like, oh, that's going to be fun. Um, and then Joe Crow and Gary um, will just randomly throw me on whatever they can throw me on. 
<laughs> yes, that's true. That's that's the, that's their modus operandi. Uh, like even if I don't necessarily know a thing about a thing, I'm like I had that. That's why I have the entire month of October of uh, of August to cram for anything that I don't already know. <laughs> and thank you for reminding me to send a thoughtful note to Joe Crow that I'm not doing an 8 a.m. Monday morning panel again. Thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, he did that to me one year, uh, 8 a.m. on Monday, and I flatly told him, no. I'm like, I, I, I hate you, no. and I refuse to come to this panel in actual <laughs> clothing. So I did that entire panel in a uh, bathrobe and shorts. Mm-hmm. I did nice. it with three cups of Starbucks. Oh, no. I, I was like, hey, they're, they're like, we'll, fight, we'll get you coffee. I'm like, oh, that was a given. <laughs> yeah, seriously. You didn't have a choice there. Uh, but no, I, I think Michael Bailey still has some fun pictures of me doing, answering questions using interpretive dance in my bathrobe because I was just like, I refused a human <laughs> for this panel. <laughs> You're going to put me on this. Fine, great, whatever, but I refused to human. <laughs> <laughs> what are uh what would be some of uh what would you consider some of your highlights at dragon con some of the cool things that have happened to you? oh man um one of the coolest things um apart from you know tripping and being caught by burt ward who is forever who is forever my robin um robin saved, robin you? saved me i tripped over a cord <laughs> and and he caught me and kept me from doing a face plant did he, did he say something witty? No, he's just like, like oh, careful. No, no, he was just like, oh, careful, you know. Court, court. Holy happenstance, <laughs> Batman. No, but I wish he had, because Adam West was right behind him, and I already had Hart's eyes, yeah. because gotta, it got to work on it got to work on retelling that story. <laughs> that's, uh, that's that's key, right? She, he's got to, like, say something quippy. But, but go ahead, uh, so that was pretty cool. Um, the year that you had most of the Falling Skies cast there, Hilariously enough, because this only happens to us, we actually got, we had been talking with uh, Colin Cunningham and um, some of the other cast members and Colin, and that was the year that the Falling Skies season four finale was happening during Dragon Con. Um, And my roommate and I are huge Falling Skies fans, so we had literally like cleared that part of the schedule because we're like, we don't care if we're in Nashville or Atlanta, the TV has TNT, we're watching this. I'm like, our roommates can deal for two hours. So, but it wound up that uh, Colin Cunningham decided to do a live, like like a viewing of it in his hotel room and invited uh, me, my roommate, and like 25 other hardcore Falling Skies fans. So we got to watch the live airing of the season four finale with Colin Cunningham, who I think had the world's best time because he knew everything that was coming so he just got to sit there and watch us all react so that was that was pretty cool um i don't know i have like so many fun dragon con stories uh i mean last year during our killjoys panel um uh tamsin mcdonough the voice of lucy popped in and asked a question back in the back um during while the panel was going on and that was that was pretty fun um other than that, I mean, I just, there's that. And then there was, yeah, the Nightville panel last year for the, for the, uh, we've always been here, queer, queer characters in science fiction that we did with uh, Cecil Baldwin from Welcome to Night Vale. That one was probably like one of the like top 10 experiences. That sounds really cool. It sounds like, like most of your time at Dragon Con is spent at panels um do you do you what do you get a chance to go out and do anything else or? uh i i bounce around from panels to panels because i mean i'm i'm a historian um uh, in my muggle life so just nerding out with people about things we mutually love is kind of what i do uh but there there's also just like random other things um sometimes uh we'll pop out for for dinner or drinks with a couple of our writer friends or there's also Writer's Bar Con, which is also really, really fun, um, which is literally just when all of the writers who are at Dragon Con pick one of the hotel bars and then just go sit and, like, shop talk and, you know, throw random accusations around. And and by random accusations, I mean plot bunnies. Um, <laughs> 
and then we all mutually curse each other because crap, now we have an idea. Uh, so, but that's always fun. I mean, it's, it's mostly just the people like hanging out, Joe and Gary with you guys. Um, you know, Kellen, Kellen Harkin's husband makes the world's best chocolate chip cookies. Like, and they're like brownie depth chocolate chip cookies. Like they're amazing. So that's good to know. That's good information to know. <laughs> and they're me safe. So basically what I'm saying, if you want one is you have to beat me to it. So <laughs> that, that sounds like a, that's, a, that's too hard. To do. <laughs> what, uh, what would you say is uh, in your mind, what makes Dragon Con unique? What makes it special? Well, I mean, there was always the part where you kind of just, once you get there, your feet kind of just automatically know where you need to go. And then, like, that that's already ingrained into you. So, like, you hit Atlanta and you're like, I know immediately we, we turn left here, we go here, we go here. That kind of muscle memory from just walking everywhere. Um but then also just like I said, the people that you get to meet, the the track directors, the the other fans. I mean, it's it's one great nerd love fest, um, in its best form, um, and that's kind of what what the best part of Dragon Con is. I mean, it's one giant nerd family reunion, um, and that's kind of I mean that's kind of how I describe it to most of my friends who who are like. How many? How many of there are you? And I'm like, so many, dude, so many. I'm like, this is the world's largest nerd family reunion, um, complete with throwing chairs and that weird drunk uncle that nobody really likes. Um, but, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but I mean, it, it does because you make you make friendships there. I mean, it's not just. I mean, the networking is also amazing. Um, if you're approaching it from a working perspective or a creative perspective. But it's also it's also just really fun to just get to hang out and like fly your nerd flag high, and there's literally not a single person who will, uh, you know, who's who's really going to look down at you for that. I mean, oh, I do have one other really super fun story. It is also one of the few places um, because I um, I also have mobility issues um, because I I am several different flavors of disabled. Um, and it is also the only place where you can hold a 20, 20 bucks up in the air and yell hold or as loud as you can. And immediately you'll have like several people like kind of rushing to you going, okay, how can we help? You know, or, or where do you need to go? <laughs> so uh, I had two Marines who just kind of were like, yeah, what do you need? I'm like, yeah, I need to get from this part of the Marriott to that part of the Marriott in the next 10 minutes. And my body is just not going to do this. So I need some help. So, uh, so yeah, that was fine. Um, you know, 20, 20 bucks and yelling Hodor as loud as I could. And, you know, Hey, I, I got, I got a ride. <laughs> that's, that's good information to know. Darren, could that help you in some ways? I mean, twenty bucks is twenty bucks. Twenty bucks and you yeah. That's right. what I tell the drunk straight boys at the bar, but you know, <laughs> they don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, very cool. Well, we are glad that you could join us uh, for this episode, Bethany. It's been great. Uh, obviously, getting to know you at Dragon Con, being on panels with you and such. It's it's fun to have you on this show. Yay! It's always fun to hang out with you guys. Absolutely, and we appreciate you. Um, also appreciate uh, our next guest who comes to us from, uh, well, he is uh, a cosplayer, he is a costumer, he is a general entertainer. Please welcome Michael Mosley to the show. Joining us now, we are very happy to present, uh, we've got a cosplayer, a costumer, uh, and an all-around entertainer. Michael Mosley is with us. Michael, welcome. Hey, hey, thanks, guys. Thanks. I appreciate, appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Absolutely. We appreciate your time. Um, I, I know that uh, you are you are a fixture now, it seems like, at Dragon Con. How long have you been going to Dragon Con? Uh, I've been going like 13 years. It's okay. About 13 years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you, do you, uh, do you remember your first time? What, what drew you to Dragon Con? 
Yeah, okay. So, uh, true story, back in the day, once upon a time, many moons ago, I was a uh, professional wrestler. And so I would go for the DragCon wrestling. So I got booked to go one year. Um, and I was like, all right, yeah, let's check it out. You know, there's this convention thing. So my sister and I drove up and uh, we met our buddy who ended up going on to do bigger and better things. <laughs> well, I guess talk about him. <laughs> but uh, so we met him up there. And while we were up there, um, we you know got tickets for the whole whole weekend. So I was like, all right, well, let's check it out. Let's see what this whole thing's about. And then uh, next thing you know, we're walking around and everyone's in costumes and there we are in like our wrestling t-shirt. So uh, he looks at me and he was like, hey man, we've got to do something different. And I was like, yeah, you're right. So we uh, drove to Walmart and we're trying to find something we could do, some sort of costume, right? So funny story, underwear models has become like our thing, especially on Saturday nights. We always find some way to do some weird underwear models and it came from this. So we're walking around Walmart and you know those really cheesy Hanes packages where everyone looks like incredibly happy for no reason. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Those guys are the best, like the Prism yes. guys stuff. <laughs> so we're like, yo, let's be these guys. And so our first cosplay was us in our underwear. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we, we came back and we threw those on and my sister grabbed uh, two brown towels and made this like Xeno Warrior Princess thing. Um, and that was it. From that point, we were hooked. Like once we got the response of everyone and we saw how much fun everyone was having, it was like this big cool costume party. So it started off there, and then as the years progressed, we really understood what cosplay was, and we dived into the, the actual nerd culture of it. And ever since, we've just been just going at it. Was that your first experience with costuming? Uh, so in a sense, yeah. Um, I went to school for uh, for dramatic arts. And while I was in school, uh, one of the things we had to take was a uh, backstage uh, class. So I happened to take costuming. And so after the first year, um, my buddy looks at me and says, hey, can we make these things? And I was like, yeah, I mean, it's been a while, but let's, let's try it. So um, we came up with an idea and we went to do Scorpion and Sub-Zero for a year or two at DragonCon. And so for the rest of that year, I, you know, and I want to say this is kind of a uh, YouTube was around, but it was before like the YouTube boom. You know what I mean? Before everyone was doing everything on YouTube. Um, so it wasn't like you could just go on there like, hey, how do I make some zero? And there's like a thousand and one different uh, costumes and cosplays. So a lot of it was trial and error. So I spent a good year just, you know, making and remaking and figuring it out before, you know, we got to these costumes that we were happy with. So our first actual cosplays I would say we made uh, was Sub Zero, Kano, and uh, uh, Scorpion. Very nice. Um, with your experience with making costumes, particularly for wrestlers, I would imagine that you have a unique perspective. I, a lot of people that we talk to that do costuming for like plays or theater or or movies, uh, their their costumes have to last maybe an hour, a couple hours tops. Uh, but I would imagine that uh, for Dragon Con, obviously, you need something a little bit more practical, something that's going to last longer. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, and not just that, we need to have stuff that um, is functional with, with everyday, with everyday uh, con going. So we have to have places for our cell phones and stuff like that. Um, we have to have places for our flask if you're over 21. And you have a flask, you know, <laughs> of course. You get it. <laughs> we have to have places for our wallets and stuff. So um, trying to build, like when we build our costumes, it's a lot of times we have to go with a little bit more. I say expensive materials when we're building just because we want them to be durable and we want to be able to have them as, you know, functional. Um, so we don't want to have something that the pockets are, are loosely done or, you know, even when you think about some of the, the clothes we wear in the pants and stuff of that nature, we wear them all day. So you want something that's a good material, not something that's going to make you feel like you're starting a fire when you're walking and, you know, um, a little different than wrestling costumes because even when we do some of the wrestling stuff, they're only in their entrance stuff. They're only in it for, you know, a few minutes. But these things were in for, you know, sometimes 8, 10, 12 hours. So, how many how many costumes so, do you usually make for Dragon Con a year? Uh, so we have a group of, I'll, I'll just do our, our main group. It's a group of uh, five of us. And we make six costumes per person for each Dragon Con. Ooh. So where, um, and the fun thing is, 
until this upcoming convention in our 13 years, out of every convention we've ever gone to, we've never worn the same costume once. So this will be the first time that we start reusing some of the costumes because we're adding some cool new elements and stuff, so like some of our old ones to really vamp them up. But up until this point, we never re wore the same costume twice. Um, well, do you when do when do you start planning for the costumes that you're going to uh, wear this? The year? day after. <laughs> the day That's after. Uh, we uh, we go we usually fly out there on a Wednesday, and then we stay until Tuesday. So Tuesday, everyone kind of recovers. Uh, we kind of do like our post dinner, and then we all go our separate ways. And then on Wednesday, we do a follow up call, and we just all start spitballing ideas. And because our group has grown to be so big, uh, the Myrtle Beach group will throw out, you know, two ideas. So we'll talk amongst ourselves first, and then when we get on the phone call, we'll spit out our two ideas. And the Atlanta group will do the same thing, and the Minnesota group will do the same thing. And so when we all get there, we have these, you know, about six to eight ideas that are out there um and then we just do a vote and so like this year uh five of the original ideas went through one of them we had to you know get back to the drawing board and revote, and we finally nailed that down but we've had times where man we <laughs> so like four months out we're still debating on what costumes we should do and we're still going back and forth you know yeah yeah what um what do you guys do usually at i mean how does dragon con play out for you what do you guys spend uh, most of your time doing at dragon con um i right, I'm, I'm drinking uh no, we do a lot of <laughs> obviously um, yeah we, we do a lot of panels uh, i love doing panels um re- more recently we actually talk on the panel versus just going to watch but i love panels it's so informative so much fun um and really just having fun and our cosplays, you know, that's really what the majority of it is. When we wake up, we throw in the costumes immediately, and then we go and we hang out until we can't walk anymore, and then we walk back to the room and go to sleep. And, I mean, even, it got so deep this year. Even our night clothes were cosplay clothes. We were all sleeping in, you know, crazy cosplay onesies, and then wake up <laughs> and do it all over again. So. <laughs> that's it's, awesome. It's a good time. <laughs> what, uh, what are some of the highlights of your past Dragon Cons? Um, okay. Oh, I have a story, and he hates when I tell the story, but this is truly my favorite Dragon Con moment ever. Um, so my buddy is Austin Creed, uh, also known as Xavier Woods in the WWE, and we go to the Dragon Con every year together. So <laughs> as we were going one year, and it's just when he had just gotten signed with TNA, and so he's, you know, become a pretty big deal, you know? Um, so we're walking, and people are walking behind us, and they're trying to get autographs. So up in the distance, we see Lou Fregno. <laughs> and Lou Fregno starts walking close to us, right? And my buddy goes, hey, what's up, Lou? Just saying hi to him. And Lou looks at him and goes, I'm not doing autographs right now, kid. And keeps on walking. <laughs> and the moment that that happened, myself and the crowd around us just died laughing. Because it's like, <laughs> this guy who's like on the come up and Lou Fregno, it was just brilliant. <laughs> One of those, if you were there, you, you'd lose it. Um, let's see what else. <laughs> I think, you know, another really good uh, time we had at DragCon is the actor who played Lafayette in True Blood. Um, we went to one of his parties that he had, and it was my first real big time of, of meeting some of the, the celebrities and stuff like that. So you go in with this preconceived notion that they're going to be, eh, you know, it's going to be weird. Uh, and one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And I, I only throw that out there because, like, with him passing, you know, the last two years, it's sad because he was genuinely an amazing person. So that was a really cool thing that would have happened if I didn't go to Dragon Con. Um, and besides that, just the fun of meeting cool people, you know, um, meeting people who are like me. Because as you're growing up and you're, you're jumping into the nerd community, especially in the 90s, there weren't a lot of us around, not out in the public. You know what I mean? Does that make any yeah. sense? No, absolutely. Like, I I agree. You know, because being a nerd wasn't a cool thing in the 90s. Like, that's how you got beat up. That's how you got, you know, uh, the, the old idea of being thrown in trash can or thrown in lockers. And that stuff was real, you know? Like, especially if you're caught reading comic books or, in my case, playing with Cogs and then playing Pokemon, you know? Um, and now it's much more accepted. It's almost a, a cool thing to be a, to be a nerd, you know, the, the term so nerd out there. But, um, 
the cool part about going to Dragon Con is you're around people who think like you, people who have similar backgrounds and experiences, and who are there not to judge, but just to have a good time, you know? Uh, so it's, it's cool being around people who have been through some things you are, or have the same interests as you. And, and I always say when you go to Dragon Con, you may not know everyone, but you're surrounded by friends, you know? Yeah, no, that's a well, well put, well put. Um, besides the actual customs themselves, what other sort of geek things turn you on? What else are you interested in? Man, I am a game nerd. I love playing video games. So gaming is, is one of my big passions. So when we go out to the conventions, we oftentimes will, like, especially this past year, we'll meet up with our Switches and we'll just, you know, switch circle and stuff like that and play, play some games. Um, I love dancing in a weird way. And it's weird because I'm not good at it. Like, <laughs> If I had a strong suit, that would not be it. If there was an Olympic sport that I was going to go, dancing would not be it. I don't even know if that's an Olympic sport. But if it was, I, I wouldn't. Uh, so, but I love going out and, and dancing and doing the raves and stuff like that. So those are always a, a lot of fun. Um, as far as, like, yeah, cons, I think that would be my, my other big fandom. You know, obviously, the cosplay. Um, obviously, comic books. I love comic books. The video games would be my other big, big nerdum. So yeah, definitely a big community of that at Dragon Con for sure. Mm-hmm. So, um, what are some of the the um, the highlights as far as your costumes that you've done that have gone over com- really well, or some that maybe you thought might and didn't? Okay, yeah, okay. So the weirdest thing is the costume that I thought would get the most attention got the least attention. Um, <laughs> Which is really crazy. And that was my, uh, I did a couple years ago a cyborg costume. And I okay. just re, I took some parts from Iron Man. I reimagined cyborg as if you were in this Iron Man universe. And I was like, oh, this is going to be that costume that people are going to know. And yeah, yay, let's go. And then that took the self out of Um, and then I, about two years ago, I went to a costume store and they had a cheap, um, Denison sister, uh, one of her from Hocus Pocus. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'll get it just for fun. This will be funny to do. And I went out there, and for some reason, that was like the costume. <laughs> that was the one that people were obsessed with. So I'm like, okay, all the hours I spend making costumes, no one cares about. But this $30 cheap costume, <laughs> we're going to make this one it. But, um, that's that's know, always the way, isn't it? Costumes. Yeah, right? So, um, But there's a lot that we did. Uh, I think the Mojo Jojo and him we did about three years ago was a lot of fun. Simply because nobody knew it was us, you know. Uh, Austin was in full prosthetics, and with all the makeup and the wigs and stuff, as we're walking around, when people were coming and saying they like the costumes and stuff, it wasn't because you know he was Austin Creed, he was or I was Mike Mosley. It was because they generally enjoyed our stuff, and it was, that was a really cool experience too. Uh, yeah, do, and then after talking to... with people, good. Do you have to, do you feel like you have to sort of accommodate for that? Or is Dragon Con pretty accepting? Do you have to like usually kind of hide um, a little bit, especially during the day? No, I wouldn't say hide. It's just, it's because it's, it's different now. Um, and I know that sounds, I don't know how to say it without sounding weird or, or silly about it. It's different. Um, I, when I was a wrestler, I dreamt of being this really cool, awesome superstar one day. Uh, and then when I decided to retire those dreams, I kind of gave up the idea of ever being known in any way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? Um, and so as we're going to conventions, people are starting to appreciate the work that we're doing. And because of that, now people are starting to know who we are. And, you know, I would say a couple months ago, I walked through my local grocery store and someone who I've never met, didn't know them from a can of spray paint, came up to me and started talking about the stuff that I was posting on my Instagram. Um, and I was like, oh, this is awesome, because I feel like, you know, people are starting to, to kind of recognize it a little bit. Now, I'm not wrong. I'm nowhere, I'm not celebrity or anything like that. But it's cool because now I feel like people are starting to, to see some of the hard work, you know, and it also gives me a chance to also connect with people on a different level where we can have conversations about some of our, our trials and tribulations as we were growing up and have, like, deep conversations, you know. So that's been really cool. Um, as far as Austin goes, 
man, he is all about it. He doesn't ever flaunt his his position in society and stuff like that out there. He's just, you know, a cool guy, like talking to people. So instead of hiding, he's like, let's go out, let's go meet people, let's go meet cool people, because life's about experiences. So uh, we've actually been the opposite. We tend to kind of, you know, love opening up and talking to people. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's, it's been, you know, with his level of success and the, the level of success that I have, you know, it's been cool being out there and around people, and it's been cool getting to really interact with people. And on that same same topic, um, what ends up happening a lot of times, especially on my on my side, someone will come up to me and they'll say, "Oh, I love your costume, I love your work," and I'll look at their work and I literally tell you, "Your stuff is ten times better than mine. Tell me how you did this, you know." And it becomes this partner sharing thing um, was. And that's one thing I think is unique for a drag conference. A lot of other conventions, a lot of other conventions you go to, it becomes a competition, right? Um, and anyone call it any way they want to. But when you're making your cosplays, you're out there showing off. A lot of people get to a certain point where they get what I call cosplayer ego, and it becomes a competition. You know, like I want to do this, I want to be the best. You know, and you see someone else's cosplay, you're like, oh, well, I would have done this and I would have done that, which is total wrong way of looking at things, but it, it exists. You know. But for some reason, I don't know what it is about Dragon Con, but it's, it's not like that. You know, there's other conventions that are the same that I love that are not like that also. Like, that was Awesome Con and a lot of other places. They're fantastic. But it's, like I said, there's something about Dragon Con. People are so cool, so warm, so accepting, you know? That's really cool to hear because uh, I'm, I, I, you know, you hear certain things about the, especially the cosplay community, especially how maybe it's gotten, as some folks have gotten more professional that it's been kind of separated and everything, but it's good to hear that even at Dragon Con, there's that sort of even playing field there still. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things, uh, again, that idea of community, um, which is why we go to conventions anyway. Let's be real. The reason we go is because we want to meet cool people and hang out with, with people like us, you know? And I think the fact that Dragon Con still takes true those roots is such an amazing thing. It's a culture that they have cultivated. And I don't know how they did it, but they did it, and it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, we're still trying to figure that too, out too. Um, I guess if everybody could figure it out, everybody would be doing it. But um, that's what makes yeah, Dragon Con. Right. That's what makes Dragon Con Dragon Con, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, very cool. Well, we appreciate your time. And, and really, um, I know your time's valuable, especially since you've got um, probably one of the uh, biggest events of the year outside of Dragon Con happening uh, next month, right? Or in a couple of weeks, actually, right? Well, yeah. So we fly to Boston tomorrow. We're there for three days and we fly back to Myrtle. And we're here for one day and then we're off to New York for WrestleMania. So it was wow. New Jersey Park for WrestleMania. Well, I can't wait to see what you've got cooked up for WrestleMania. Um, while, uh, outside of WrestleMania, anything else that uh, we should look for to find your work or where you'll be at? Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of cool things we have coming up this year. So we're at a lot of different conventions. I'll just shoot off a couple that we're at, and then I'll tell you about a cool project that I'm working on. Um, so I'll be at MomoCon. We'll be at uh, Big Easy Con, Awesome Con. Um, we'll be at a convention in, in Portland that I'm really super excited about because I've never been to Portland. Um, we'll be back at BlurCon, of course, Dragon Con, uh, Anime, NYC. Those are just a few of the ones we have lined up right now. Um, so if you're around any of those, definitely come check us out. If not, just come hang out with us anyway. Uh, this weekend, if you're going to be at PAX, come on, come find me. Uh, if you're a gamer and you want to challenge me, I'll, listen, I'll play you. Don't get mad if I beat you. Don't go <laughs> get me on Twitter trash talking me after that. But I'll, I'll throw down with some video games if you want to come play me in some video games. Um, and a cool project that I'm working on that I'm really excited about, uh, my, my brother from another mother, Tony Ray, uh, my sister, Ebony, and I got together and we started working on a pilot for a pilot series. And we just finished episode one of the pilot. It's called Between the Scenes. And uh, essentially what we're doing is we go around to uh, places, we find out what the culture is like, and really dive deep into the actual culture by piercing the arts and the foods and things like that. And then we reimagine a pop culture uh, character by using that culture of each place. So um, it's really cool. It's a lot of, it's, it reminds me of Anthony Bourdain's Parts Unknown mixed with like Face Off, you know, and that kind of fun thing. So it's, it's really cool, really fun idea. 
Uh, like I said, we finished pilot episode number one, so we're going to be shopping that out, and then, you know, hopefully someone picks it up, and if not, then it'll be on YouTube for everyone to take a look at. That sounds, that really sounds cool. It sounds very exciting. A different angle on that. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, so where can people go to find you online to find out all about this project and everything else you're working on? So they can check out, uh, my Instagram. The best way to, to reach me is Instagram. And I'll tell you, if anyone reaches out to me on Instagram, nine times out of 10, I'm going to respond back to you unless you send me something weird. But uh, if you uh, reach out to me on Instagram, uh, it's the real Michael Mosley and that's P-A-T-R-E-A-L. M I K A L M O S L E Y C Real Michael Mosley. That's the same thing on Twitter, but I don't really tweet. But then I'm too old for the tweeting. I feel like, <laughs> uh, but I definitely, definitely on Instagram, hit me up there. And if you have something cool, if you're doing something awesome, or if you just have a question, like if you're like, "Yo, I need to build this, and I don't know what to do," shoot me a message. I love working through that kind of stuff. So if you have a problem you can't figure it out, call me. Let's work it out together. Awesome. Well, thanks for being so accessible. We appreciate that. And uh, we'll see you at the at the con. I'll see you guys there, man. It's going to be fun. you got to come uh, have some apple juice with us. <laughs> apple pie, right? Apple pie. There it is. Yeah. It's, it's so much suspicion, yeah? <laughs> Yes, yes. We, I think, uh, I think Faber's already got some. Well, I know he's already got some made because we had some uh, about a month ago in his house. Only three, only what? three gallons worth. I didn't get the invite. What three? Oh, that's it. Just three gallons. Only three gallons. <laughs> that's a good yeah. start. We're gonna need more than that for Dragon Con for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, guys, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you guys for having me on, man. This is what you guys are doing is super awesome, and you know, please. Keep doing what you're doing. It's amazing. So thank you guys again. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll uh, have all the links to your stuff on our show notes. And uh, we'll, uh, like I said, see you at the con, man. All right. See you then. Thanks again, Michael. We really appreciate you being and had taken the time to be on the show and join us this episode. Um, um, so we're almost out of here. We've got a piece of uh, email that I wanted to share with our listeners. Uh, it starts off, good afternoon, Dragon Con crew, which is weird because it's night now. But uh, <laughs> um, anyway, goes on to say, I have been listening to your monthly Dragon Con reports for the last five years. Oh, I'm sorry. That's and loud. learned nothing. I know it. Right? No, <laughs> um, he hasn't I am one sobered those... up yet. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Drink the pie. I am one of those nerds that thinks about Dragon Con all year long. I look forward to the end of January every year for you guys to start your podcast. After listening to the first two episodes of the year, I want to share what brought me to Dragon Con and how I enjoy the con. I attended the ACE convention in Atlanta in early 2008. The show was held at the Sheridan in downtown Atlanta. I was there. I remember this. Uh, This was my first time attending an out-of-town show. I had a great time and could not imagine enjoying a convention as much as I enjoyed this one. I happened to stop by and talk to a volunteer at the show during the weekend and told her how much of a good time I was having. She said, well, if you like this one, you should try Dragon Con. (laughs) I had never heard of Dragon Con, uh, marketing fail there, uh, and thought I would give it a go. When I got home, I purchased my tickets and booked a hotel at the Hilton. Yes, back then it was a lot easier to book a room at the host hotel. I arrived at the Hilton, and as I made my way from the parking garage, I saw a guy dressed up like Julius Caesar in a toga made of a bedsheet. I thought this was great and could not wait to see what else the con had to offer. I made my way to the Sheridan and waited in line for about three hours to pick up my badge. I was so excited that the wait was not bad at all. (laughs) Wow. Okay. (laughs) Hey, I can remember when the wait was When was this? This was in 2008. Yeah, Registration wasn't fixed then, so I'm guessing he bought it at the door like I did back then. Yeah, maybe. Uh, that I was met the t- quick line. <laughs> <laughs> the I met a ton of pe- line was hell. I met a ton of people in line and was amazed to see all of the people in line dressed up in all sorts of different costumes. So it just After went pick- quick. I got it. After picking up my badge, I made it over to the Marriott, and my jaw dropped. I can't imagine what he saw. But anyway, I could not believe that there were so many people that were like me. Growing up in a small town, I never imagined that I would see this many nerds in the same place. (laughs) I spent the whole weekend walking around in awe, being amazed that I have found the one event that made me feel like I have finally found my place in the world. Monday afternoon was hard. I did not want to leave. 
I knew then that I would be coming back to Dragon Con every year. The next two years, I attended the convention alone and had a great time. Now we talked about whether or not you're supposed to, whether you should uh, attend it alone. This guy was going solo. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those introverts who likes to go on my own and spend the whole time adventuring around the con and finding different panels to wander into. After the third year, a friend of mine from college came down with me. And two years after that, a couple of other friends joined us. They also fell in love with Dragon Con and all vowed to return every year. In episode two, you guys discussed if anyone has Dragon Con memorabilia display at home. I have bought a print every year that I have attended, got it framed, and have it hanging on the wall in my bonus room. Sweet. You guys do a great job with the podcast. I will continue to listen as long as you guys continue producing them. You are great ambassadors for Dragon Con and the city of Atlanta. Please keep up the good work and hope to meet you guys in person this year. Reggie. I'll be the one holding the cup of pie. (laughs) <laughs> so well that's not me. gonna that's not gonna narrow it down no either. no well I'm it's, say, it's... i'm 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 the very very tiny person moving very very fast <laughs> <laughs> so you're like the golden snitch of dragon con pretty much sweet Reggie. i was gonna say anyone who's seen me running from the west End to the marriott <laughs> to the hilton then back to the sheraton yeah no golden snitch works yeah, well, people who appara- catch you win Dragon Con, right? <laughs> uh, apparently, she's got a couple of Marines as escorts, so she shouldn't be that difficult to, <laughs> to spot at all. <laughs> she's the one waving a 20 at Marines. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me. What? <laughs> <laughs> We're now in direct competition. Get off my corner, girl. Anyway. Oh, oh, it's going, going down. Oh, God, I hope so. Oh, goodness. All right. So thank Ooh, this you, is going to turn ugly real quick. Yeah, Pre- yeah I know. You can it's going to be the end of the show. That the pie is really to Michael.Gordon at. The, the, pie is, the pie is really kicking in. No, in all serious, Reggie, thank you so much for that yeah, email. Thank you, man. We really appreciate it. Um, we so we really, it, dude. Yeah, we really like doing the show for you guys. So that means a lot to us. So And do us a favor. And we're not that hard to find. I've got a table at, in the artist alley. <laughs> Stand out uh, like sore thumbs. <laughs> I know. We're all. We're all easy to find. Hit us up next year. And, uh, I was going to say, uh, find them at the Sci-Fly Classics track room. Just stand absolutely. still for five seconds. One of them will walk past. <laughs> exactly. The Council of Mics will descend upon you. Uh, it's not pretty. Okay. <laughs> not pretty. <laughs> well, very cool. So now we draw a close because my voice is really about to go now. My doubt, now we draw a close to our third episode of the 2019 Dragon Con Con Report. A big thanks for everyone for joining us in this episode, especially uh, Michael Mosley, of course. Um, I can't wait to see what he's got in store for uh, dressing up the New Day and um, at, at WrestleMania this year and as well as some of the other shows. Go click his links. Check him out on Instagram. Uh, follow this guy. Uh, you won't regret it. He'll put a smile on your face every time he posts. Uh, also, thanks to our station crew, um, Bethany, thanks for coming on, man, and 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 and, and substituting for uh, you are you are a substitute host today. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you guys need me, you know I'm there. I'm down for it. Absolutely, that's very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, Darren. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. And thank you, Director Faber. For of course, none of this is going to be possible. Of course, I'm the one who hits record. We uh, try to cover all we can with these specials, but to keep up with the latest news, please check out the official Dragon Con website, their social media outlets. All the tracks are active on Facebook groups and have various other social media as well. And don't forget, they, Dragon Con has a new newsletter, so sign up for that. We here on, uh, on the Con Report can be also found on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Stitcher. We're all over the place. We want you to be part of the discussion, so please feel free to join us. And be sure to check out our Amazon link on our esonetwork.com site. It doesn't cost you any more to purchase your stuff, and it helps us out a lot. We also have a Tee Public store filled with all kinds of cool designs. There's a link for that at the top of the page. There's also a link to our Patreon page. Go, go, go. We, we appreciate all the support you can give us. Thanks so much for listening. I'm your host, Mike Gordon, and it's been my pleasure. We'll see you at the con. Now go rest your voice. And I'm done. I have no more voice. Before. All right. Good night, everybody, then. <laughs> I said, hey, little girl, what do you do? I've been waiting all week for something like you. Because it's Friday night and everybody's in the street. I say, come on, come on, come on, come on with me. Hey. All that we need. Gonna be some rock and roll, eh? Hey.
you know the ESO Network has a brand new Patreon? That's right. We're asking for your help, and you could do it for as little as a dollar a month. Don't fret. All your favorite shows will still be available for free as always, but now you can get exclusive podcasts and more not heard anywhere else but on our Patreon. To sign up for the ESO Network, Patreon's easy. All you have to do is click on the link on the top navigation of the ESO Network website or go to patreon.com slash ESO Network. With your support of the ESO Network, it's you who will reap the rewards. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping through Amazon.com or the Tee Public Store which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.